Okay, so uh, this little video is going to be about xerophytes. And um, xerophytes is spelt with an X. I really think they should uh, change the phonetic alphabet. Change X-ray into xerophytes, which is a proper word. Anyway, there we go. That's just my opinion. Now the point about xerophytes is they live in what's a reasonably hostile environment for a plant because they're living in places that are dry and a much better word to use is arid. Um, now this, I need to warn you, this does not necessarily mean hot. So these are not necessarily hot environments. So we have plenty of xerophytes um, living in the UK, so they could be places that are uh, windy, so there's uh, very high transpiration rates for those plants, so there might be a low, you know, reasonably low water availability, but they're transpiring um, very quickly because it's very windy. It could be a place with perhaps uh, good drainage and certainly the example in your booklet is of marram grass so you know sand dunes very good drainage and that's why they're dry they're not hot at all usually um, uh, and of course anywhere where it's hot and you've got you know hardly any rainfall so anywhere where there's low rainfall and of course hot as well but they're not necessarily hot environments so if you're a xerophyte you've got big problems with water availability and therefore the adaptations that have favoured this type of plant survival are adaptations that reduce water loss. By transpiration. Now of course in addition to that they may have root adaptations uh, that enable them to take up a lot of water so they might have very shallow very spready out roots big surface area to get all the, any surface water that's falling. They might have very deep tap roots to access groundwater from below the ground. But we're particularly concerned with their leaf adaptations to reduce the water loss by transpiration. So, <coughs> we need um, to think now really what, what factors affect transpiration. And one of the factors is the surface area of the leaf. And so, if you've got a bigger surface area, then you're going to have a higher rate of transpiration. So to reduce the water loss by transpiration, we have leaves with reduced surface area. And an example would be plants with uh, needles, uh, like uh, pine trees. They live at, uh, you know, they're altitude trees really. So tend to be sort of cold but windy, low water availability, there's lots of drainage going on. Um, so you've got pine, um, heather, uh, which we call the ericaceous species. Uh, or they could have them reduced right down and not use them for photosynthesis at all and have spines and the cacti are a prime example. They tend to do their photosynthesis through um, their stems. You could have <coughs> as an adaptation any plant that would have fewer stomata per unit area. And obviously the fewer stomata you have, the less stomata you have to lose water through. So that would be a very good adaptation. Those plants would survive better and, and pass on their alleles for fewer stomata. 
Um, can't think of an example for that, so tough. Um, plants, obviously, the one that students tend to think of are to have a, a thicker waxy cuticle than normal. And uh, what that does is it reduces, and again, you need to work on your explanations. This reduces cuticular transpiration. That's the loss through the cuticle, which you know you can therefore infer isn't entirely as waterproof as you would wish. And then we have adaptations. So this is the sort of deals with the surface area aspect of diffusion. This, uh, you know is about sort of waterproofing and then we have all sorts of adaptations that reduce the diffusion gradient <coughs> so if you remember your sort of um, diffusion stuff the things that increase the rate of diffusion are things like you know higher temperatures there's nothing a plant could do about having higher or lower temperature um, surface area concentration gradient. Concentration gradient is something that plants have actually got adaptations to reduce. So I'm going to chunk all these three together. So one thing that could happen is you could have sunken stomata. I'll draw you a little picture in a minute. You could have trichomes which is a posh word for uh, plant hairs. Now this is not hair like our hair that's sort of made of units of protein secreted from a cell. These are more like root hair cells where the sort of cytoplasm is extended to make a trichome. And you could have rolled leaves. And again, back to those later. So, these three all trap water vapour and that's important it's water vapour not water it's the gaseous form of water so it's evaporated the trap water vapour near to the stomata and reduce the diffusion gradient And that is obviously from the inside to the outside of the leaf. Reducing rate of diffusion from the leaf. So let's do those in sort of a little bit more detail. And there is another video where I show you lots of beautiful pictures of lovely plants with little diagrams of what their leaves are like. But with sunken stomata, what we're really saying is that if you've got your epidermis coming along like this in a normal plant, the guard cells are kind of on the surface like that in the stomata. So that would be the sort of leaf surface and of course your water vapour is evaporating and diffusing out and forming a little diffusion shell round the stomata. A sunken stomata might be where your epidermis is coming along like that but your guard cells are up here somewhere. It can be a bit more extreme than that so you might have, you know, there might be the epidermis might curl round so that you get your stomata right the way, really quite a long way inside the leaf. And of course if you've got then a nice thick waxy cuticle over the top that's going to sink it in even further and uh, you might have really quite complex arrangements and I would call this an air chamber.
so what happens here is the water vapour diffuses out but it kind of gets stuck here so you've got much longer diffusion path but also because your water vapour is kind of trapped in this little air chamber here it's not really kind of going anywhere fast so you know it, it's then it's kind of having to go quite a way to make a diffusion shell around the uh, around the chamber. Uh, in addition to that, a lot of these plants also have hairs, these trichomes, that may well sort of lie the extensions of. It's usually epidermis, so I shouldn't have done it on the cuticle, but. They might have little hairs that, again, are just trapping that water vapour and trying to keep it next to the stomata so that you get a much less gradient. <coughs> and, of course, let me switch colour again. Things like marion grass also sort of roll their leaves round so the stomata are on the inside. This in no way looks like marron grass. I'd just like to point it out, <laughs> uh, but you could, you know, but you've got pictures of marron grass in your booklets, and there's hundreds on the internet. Um, and again, you know, not only are those protected from that wind that could blow the diffusion shell away, because that's what wind does. That's how it increases the rate of transpiration. It kind of you know goes across there and takes that away with it. Um, but here, the wind would be on the outside, and therefore the inside of the roll would be protected. And what causes a leaf to roll often are cells called hinge cells. And these are, um, when they, they're flaccid, they kind of collapse. And so if you imagine, um, your leaf like that and you've got some hinge cells if they go flaccid they're going to kind of roll that leaf round as they sort of collapse and get a bit floppy so these cause rolling now of course if you're living somewhere dry with a high transpiration rate um, one of the issues that you might face is that your cells might go flaccid but of course you still need to be in a lovely upright um, supported position to get light for photosynthesis so these plants very often are um, quite uh, stiff uh, they've got a lot of what's called sclerenchyma these are sort of quite stony cells um, and they maintain the sort of, they support the plant and keep it sort of upright and the leaves expanded to get light for photosynthesis. So that's also quite exciting. Probably not quite as important as you learning this. Now obviously if you've got a list of stuff, list of uh, adaptations that you need to know, quite a good way is to try and make a little mnemonic to help you remember it. Um, uh, you've got some good letters in there, you know, S is always a good one for a mnemonic, as is F, in fact. Okay, enjoy making your mnemonic. <laughs>